Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you. Got my coffee. I'm ready to teach. Give me some space, buddy. Let me see which lovelies are here. Sorry I'm running a minute or two late. I was having technical difficulties, but I think I got them fixed. issues getting everything typed in. Facebook can be a bit frustrating at times. I agree. Good morning, Valerie. I was trying, so whenever you go to start a, a Facebook Live, I don't know if you've ever done one before, they give you all these things that you have to fill in. Oh, what's your description? Is this a watch party? Is this a blah, 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 blah. And then sometimes I get all that in and then the microphone doesn't turn on or I'm sideways. And I was making coffee and making sure the dog had gone out. It was a little bit of, ah, this morning. But we're here, and we get to do yoga together, and that makes me happy. Love that. So let me turn the Do Not Disturb on. Yay for us. See who else is joining us here. And get started. Good morning, Frank. How are you? Guys, that was my very first sip of the day. And it was glorious. Okay. So today is back to basics. What do I mean by back to basics? When you're on this yoga journey, or pretty much any journey, you know, you start something. And when you start something new, you're maybe a little tentative and, or you want to learn everything about it, you know. I want to know about all the yogas and all the styles and all the poses. And I want to be able to do handstand and I've only been to one class, but that's what I want to do. And you go to a class and somebody says, we're going to do Ikapada Kondinyasa. And you're like, oh, what? hand a big po toes or and so you go and then there's this terminology off-putting whether it's because it's in sanskrit or because it's too hard or this person said a name of a pose and everybody knew what that pose was but you and that's just because they've been to more classes than you so what happens is in the beginning when we're learning poses we're trying to follow along. Oh, she said warrior one. Okay, that's the leg forward and my arms up. And you do warrior one and you hear that there's subtle cues, but in the beginning it's like, does, does my pose look like everybody else's pose? And I'll give a cue like how your muscle's supposed to feel. And you're like, oh, am I, am I supposed to be feeling something? So we're in our head. And then over time, we stop losing that part because we're familiar with, let's say, warrior one. Let's dissect it. And so you know what warrior one is. You start to relax into a little bit. Maybe you can feel the posture. You feel those alignments. You get a little more comfortable. But then you start to get too comfortable where you're in the pose because you know what to expect. You know what it's to come. You're familiar with it. 
It's kind of like why we have accidents within five miles of our home. We get familiar in something and we become less diligent. So we get familiar in these postures and we start to let the mind wander. And because our mind wanders, we're not in the practice. And maybe the practice could be a little better than it is, a little more detailed, a little more satisfying even, if we were present and we could break it down some more. I also get it from a, a different standpoint and not from looking at the people who are following today. What? No, she lost the video. Uh, I'm going to reply here to her. Reply. Uh, refresh. We are still here. Um, so another thing that happens, which typically is not this group. My body's great. Thanks for asking, Frank. I am really good today. Good morning, Michelle. You get some type A folks, and uh, I get it mostly in young people that I know what warrior one is now. I'm ready for headstand. But truly, headstand's great. It's fine. But the most basics of postures teach us more because of the amount of patience and duration we have to sit in them. And so we've had this 52 days of practice together. And we've learned how we teach and how it feels in our bodies. And we've created spaces where we tend to practice always in the same place. And you now know what I mean when I do a posture. When I teach something intuitively, you know what's coming next. And then there's this anticipation of postures instead of waiting for the cue. And we've got this comfort. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna crack that comfort over a little bit and open and dissect those postures. So we're gonna do over easy postures. By easy, I mean simple. Not, maybe they're not easy for you, but they're simple postures to really feel the essence of the practice because now we're over the learning curve. We're over Maybe the physicality of doing them. We've had a practice and you've gotten a little better shape. You kind of understand your breath. You understand feeling rooted uh, and connected to the floor. You understand where your arms should be, what muscle groups are working. And so you can get out of your head more, get in your body more, and feel the postures and breathe. And I think you're going to find that that's a really big challenge because we have been up until COVID pretty much a go, 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 go kind of country. And you're like, okay, I got that post, what's next? Okay, I got that post, what's next? It's like, uh, what do they say about those Lay's potato chips? You can't have just one, right? So that's the goal of today. Let's just say intention because goal feels like we have to meet an expectation. And that's another thing we shouldn't do. So we have an intention of trying to really just look and reflect on our practice. So that was a lot of blah, 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 blah. Is Julie back? Okay, good. Yay, Julie. I'm glad you guys are here. So let's begin at the top, I guess. That's the best that we can do is just start where we are and just do it. So as you have thoughts or comments, put them in here. We'll see them in between. Yay, there's Julie. With all those hearts, I love her and she is back. And I want to tell you guys, thanks again for all the letters and cards. And I love getting out my fountain pens and returning letters and sending cards. And it has been so much fun. I think that this, if anything, has been the rebirth for me of correspondence. I used to be a pen pal when I was in high school and I had so many male friends that were in the military and I would write funny letters and send them wherever they were, in Korea, in Germany, all those things. And in the process of starting this correspondence again, I found these beautiful pens that were given to me back when I graduated from high school. 
You remember back in those days, for those of us who, I think pretty much everybody who's watching that, you know, might be 50 or older, when a gift for a college graduate would be like a cross pen with their name engraved on it or any type, you got a new job. I have all my collection of cross pens I got out and it's been wonderful to use them. Some of you have already gotten letters from me and there's some of you online that should be receiving them soon. So I'm just happy to be with you every morning. Buenos dias, Palacios. Como estas? Donde estas, Jesse? All right, let's get started. We're going to sit comfortably, chin comes to the chest, and we're just going to set the intention for the practice. Find your breath. Inhaling and exhaling. And then we're going to lift that head, right ear, right shoulder. Left ear, left shoulder. And back to the center, smile. Now, we sit like this all the time. Are you aware of the sits bones pressing down on the floor? Feel that work. We're going to pull the spinal column back. Lift the pelvic floor. Pull the navel in. Feel like the rib cage kind of sucks in and supports you like a corset. Shoulders are back. Chin lifts some. Chin pulls back some, shoulders come down. That took a basic just sitting to the next level. That's what we mean by returning to basics. Something that we do consistently, that we can work and tweak and feel the benefit. Find your breath, lengthening in and up through the crown of the head. Exhaling, we keep the posture, we keep the height and the elevation of the head. And then from there, we open the eyes, we lace the fingers together, we press out, lifting up, opening through the chest, opening through the heart, we're going to turn to the right. We also do this every day, but are we aware of it? Do we just do it? We follow the motion, right? Lifting pelvic floor, pull navel in. Start to turn lower back and navel, mid back and solar plexus, shoulder blades and heart. Collarbones, shoulders, neck, jaw, eyes, tall spine. Let it be completely straight. Make sure that your spine is in a straight line. You can even use that back arm to help elevate that spine. Where's your breath? One, two, three. Four, five. We're going to let that left shoulder come down. Right hand comes up. Press right hip away. Lengthening through that waistline, through the rib cage. Look up towards top hand. One, two, three, four, five. Slowly, we're going to contract the come up. Still lifting pelvic floor, pulling that navel in. Where's your breath? Slowly, 
we're going to begin to release and turn back to the front. Check in, feel sits bones, lift pelvic floor, pull navel in, push that chest back. Nice tall spine, elongate through the neck, super tall. We're gonna lace the fingers together the other way. Now, if you don't remember which way you just did it, automatically lace your fingers. Okay, that's how you normally do it. Then change them and up. That's putting awareness in places that we are automatic. Lifting up, opening through the heart. We're going to turn to the left. We put those hands down. Good morning. Oh my gosh, it is bright and sunshiny here and it doesn't sound right for it to be dark and murky in Miami. So snuggle up and be happy down there and you can just watch me from under the covers. Nice tall spine, pressing down through the sits bones. Lift pelvic floor, pull navel in. Now turn at lower back and navel, mid back and solar plexus, shoulder blades and heart. Shoulders, collarbones, neck, chin, eyes. Use your back hand to lift you and be tall. Where's your breath? One, two, three, four, five. Gently we release back to the center. We're going to lengthen back out. Good morning, Haley. Good morning, Petra. You are welcome. I got your card yesterday, Petra, and it was exactly when I needed to get it. I will call you and, and have a chat. Vicki, I know, 52 days. Love hearing from you. Yeah, it's 52 days already. Can't believe it. You've been my supporter the whole time. I appreciate that. And lengthen out those fingertips. Nice, long stretch, lengthening through the crown of the head, lifting pelvic floor, pull your navel in, let your crown of your head extend forward, feel every in muscle, try not to get in your head of whether you're doing it right, doing it wrong, we want just to feel the changes in the body, but most important now that we've come back to these postures, we want to reconnect with breath, we want to reconnect with being present, in the body, not daydreaming. I daydream too, but we want to bring ourselves back and slowly come back. Oh, nice work. We're going to change the cross of those legs. So that reminds me of um, a parable, an, an instruction parable. I can't remember. Confucianism, Buddhism, all of those. But a meditation teacher's student asked, Oh, Master, how can I become a master of meditation? And he says, I'm not a master of meditation. I'm a master of bringing my mind back from wandering. And so that's what we are trying to do. Just bring it back to the self here because this practice becomes a moving meditation. The mind can get quiet as you focus on the body. It gives it something to do and you can breathe. So you not only are helping yourself mentally, energetically, physically, but spiritually because you have that chance just to connect to just being alive and knowing that there's something greater than you. So you get a chance to do all of that, but you have to come back to those basics. You can't have, you, you can't be greedy with your practice. I want, I want, I want, I want. You take what you have and you use that. And that's the wonderful thing about coming back to basics. We're gonna let that right arm come down. Now, as we put that right arm down and we went over props on Sunday, maybe you need a block here. Maybe you need to have your elbow off the floor. Maybe it makes it a little easier. We want to try to push down through the side. So we're trying to get that hip to come down. Opening through side body. We're going to lengthen. 
Heart forward, shoulders back. Turn and look up. One, two, three, four, five. Hand comes up. Bend at the elbow. Twist it through. Keep left hip on the floor. That's what's most important. As we twist, don't hold your breath. You'll want to. Inhale, try to lengthen through the top of the head. One, two, three, four, five. Unwind and lengthen. Slowly come up. Nicely done. Left arm comes down. And lengthen. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to let that hand come up. You're going to bend at the elbow. We're going to twist it through. Keep that right hip down. That's the key here. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to release that out and lengthen through the side body. One, two, three, four, five. Slowly, we're going to come back up. Arms come behind. Roll shoulders back, lifting the chest. Opening through the heart. Forward folding. Hands come up. One, two, three, four, five. Hands slowly come down. Find your breath, feel the sits bones, release back to the hands. And release. We're going to put the bottoms of the feet together. Yay! All right, I'm glad it's getting brighter in Miami, but see if it's windy and scally. Hopefully after that comes through, it'll get cooler. I'm looking for the positive. <laughs> We're gonna lean forward, feel that stretch through those hips. And one, two, three, four. We're lengthening through the crown of the head. We're still trying to pull that tailbone down towards the floor. So there's the elongation that happens in lower back. This extension through the crown. So we feel the connective tissue lengthening at the same time that the insides of those legs are stretching. We still feel temperature and texture of the mat underneath the legs. And we're aware of our breath. We slowly come up. We're going to bring those knees in. We're going to grab those knees and pull down. Where's your breath? Where did the feet touch? Where did they touch the floor? Where's the weight on the sits bones? Three, four, five. We're gonna slowly bring those knees up. We're gonna change the cross, roll the back. One, two, three, four, Five, bring those knees back together. Reach down, grab right foot, extend it up. One, two, three, four, five. Right foot comes down, grab left foot, extend it up. Nicely done. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to let that left foot come down. We're going to drop those knees over to the left. Nice rotation here. Good morning, Jesse. Good morning, John. Three, four, 
five. We're gonna let those legs come up over to the other side, tall spine. One, two, three, four, five. Bring those knees back up and extend those legs out. We're gonna lengthen forward towards those feet. Lifting pelvic floor, hollowing out the belly. We extend through the crown of the head. We bend at the hip crease. Our direction is the feet. It's not the destination. Maybe your hands touch here. We reach forward wherever we can. One, two, three, four, five. Slowly, we're going to come back up. Mm, nice. Work. How's everybody lower back and abs doing today? We did that yesterday. I am pretty good. Thank you for asking, Jesse. I guess it's pretty chilly and chilly haha, <laughs> right now. You're fall time. And we slowly bring those knees in. Oh, and rock from side to side. So we are starting to develop some deep intention in those, these warm-up postures. So that when we make it to the standing postures, we can really break them down. But we've already kind of primed awareness, intention, and breathing before we ever make it to the feet. So we're going to allow those arms to come out. We're going to let those legs rotate over to the left. Keeping that right shoulder down, a lot of times we're here, you, you hear me, and you follow along, but your brain goes on to what you have to do today, and bring yourself back to the body. See if your right shoulder can touch the floor, and your left knee can touch the floor. What happens on that trail of connective tissue on the outside? Is your right knee able to come down and touch that left knee? Do you feel it in the waistline, the rib cage, or the glute? Where is that tightness? Understand the tendencies of your body. And we're going to bring those knees back up. Drop those knees over to the right. Nice big stretch. And again, first we focus on can the right knee make it to the floor? Can the left shoulder make it to the floor? And then we're going to feel this connective tissue, this nice kinetic line down that side body. Do we feel a release? Do we feel a restriction? And really notice, I know you've put on some clothing that might have been tight in the armpit or across the back if you brought your hands forward. When you begin to pay attention to the body, you begin to feel places in your body where the fascia is like that. Very much like how a sock can get turned around in your shoe. And that can be manipulated with a massage therapist, with cupping, but you can do it through yoga postures too and the stretching tissue in certain directions just to alleviate and help that twist back. We're going to bring those knees back to the center and you're going to put those feet up. We're going to grab those heels and pull down. Feel the back of those hips stretch. Oof, nice work. One. Two, three, four, five. From there, we're going to just pull those knees in and rock. All of this is just to bring awareness, warmth to the tissue. Most of the basics is going to be in our standing postures because that's what we tend to learn first. This space gives you a chance to become aware of your breathing your tactile response to environment. Intuitively feel the body and warm up. We're going to put the bottoms of the feet flat on the floor. 
Hands down by the feet. We're going to slowly lift up. Try to keep those legs parallel. And one, two, three, four, five. Slowly coming down. Right foot comes on the left ankle, or left, no, right foot, left knee. Pull that in just a little bit more because I really can't wait to get us on our feet. And gently release. We're going to take that right foot and place it under and rotate open. That made my hip pop already. And we're going to pull that left knee in. This is a significant stretch here. Activate left foot. One, two, three, four, five. Gently release. Bring that knee up. Left foot comes onto right knee. Pull the right knee into the chest. Feel that work. One, two, three, four, five. Gently release that foot down. We're going to take that foot, place it under. Oof, that hip popped too. Bring that right knee in. Make sure this right foot is active. Feel that work. Notice the awareness in the front of this hip flexor through that IT band on the outside. Maybe the psoas is triggering a little bit. Be aware of how that affects your body today. It might not affect it the same way tomorrow. And gently release that foot down. We're going to bring that left knee back. Hands beside, press down through feet, lifting up. One, two, three, four, five. Slowly rolling back down. <sighs> From there, we're going to pull those knees in, cross at the ankles, rolling up. And then from there... We're going to come right on forward to hands and knees. Checking in. <laughs> Still grouchy lower backs, and it is chilly and chilly. Okay. I love the comments, guys. You should, after the practice, if you ever have time, read them. Because everybody talks to everybody in there and it's wonderful. Inhaling up and down and up and down. Flat back. We're going to make a C with the spine to the right. We're going to make a C with the spine to the left. Back to the center. Soften those feet. Child's pose. All right. So we've got this cordialness done. We've got the courting or the dating done, so to speak. Because now we're going to get into the meat of the practice. We're going to work on the very first posture that we need to break down again. And that's down dog. Down dog is one of those that we truly, I don't want to say that you have a struggle with through your entire career in your yoga practice. I am constantly working or shifting or moving with down dog. There's so many elements in that down dog. And I don't want to over teach it right now. I don't want you to get in learning mode and overthink your down dog because I'm trying to get you not to be there. I want you to feel it. I want us to go back to something that was hard, that then got easier, then then got taken for granted. So we're going to put those palms down and we're going to come back to down dog. 
Now, when we first started our down dog, we're like, oh, I can't get my legs straight. I can't get my heels down. My wrists hurt. There's all kinds of things. And then you just kind of float in and out of down dog because it was mostly a transition posture. Or you get here and you automatically self-adjust whether you need to or not. But we just want to enjoy the feeling of down dog. We're trying to elongate the arms, so that means take the bends out of the elbows, but we're trying to broaden the back. So you're trying to scoop those elbows in and try to turn the eyes of the elbows up towards the sky as the shoulders broaden. You're trying to lower the heels towards the floor. They won't touch, but they'll hover. You're going to fill in the lower back. You're not going to shrug the shoulders. We, in the beginning, try to figure out, well, how far away should my hands be from my feet? Are my hands wide enough? Intuitively, your body figures out what your divine right space is. Use those fingertips to really grab. Where's your breathing? Where's your attention? Where's your dressing and focus? Where do you feel it today? Can you breathe and feel connected, feeling temperature and texture under your hands and your feet at the same time that you're broadening the shoulders, at the same time you're remembering to breathe and tuck and focus? That is being present. That is taking a simple posture and making it an advanced posture. We're going to put those knees down. We're going to come to child's pose. Hands by the feet. Soften. Open and close those fingers and process. And you don't have to mentally process. I want you to physically process. When you open and close those hands, you're going to feel the work in the wrist. With your legs bent like this and your feet bent like this, you feel that restoration from the last posture. Counter. Learn to feel the body intelligence. Rely on your breath to be an indicator if you're working too hard or not hard enough. Or if the mind is becoming agitated, your breath will change. Let's try that again with the same amount of intensity and use it as the transition to make ourselves to warrior one. But we want to thoughtfully move through these practices. So we're gonna extend those arms out. We're gonna inhale up into table. Set the intention through the palms. Enjoy the texture and feeling under your fingers. Activate the fingers. Feel the strength of the arms. Alignment of shoulders as you begin to straighten. Lengthen the body. Roll the shoulders away from the ears. Maybe adjust your length. Fill in lower back. Pressing heels towards floor. If that's too aggressive, think of lengthening the tissue behind the backs of the knees. It will get the same result. It's like, is the glass half full or half empty? Yes and yes, but theoretically the glass is full, right? It's always full because half of it's liquid, the other half is air. It's still full. So that same thing is happening in your practice. There's still work. But what is the feeling over the function of the practice? We're going to bend those knees. Let that right foot come forward. Now we worked on that a couple of days ago about being able to slide that foot forward. We're going to ground this back foot. That should be coordinated with your breath. We're going to coordinate the up with an inhale, but you want to make sure you have a good foundation before you build or you'll sway. So we feel that good foundation. We're lined up here. You either want heel to heel or to the middle line of that back foot. Right knee is over right ankle. My toes are going in the direction that I want them to go. I press down through the foot. Good morning, Randy. Arms lift up. Broaden shoulders, soften them down. 
So even if you have to kind of goal post first and then straighten, one, two, we're going to 10 on all of these. Find your breath. Three. Four. Press down to the outside edge of your back foot. Five. Is your knee still over your ankle? Six. Soften the tissue under your ears. Seven, bring your fingers together and close them. Eight, try to pull in your navel. Where's your breath? Nine, lifting that pelvic floor, really lift, lift, lift. That's 10. Plan your next exhale for coming down. The yoga dog is right off camera sleeping. He can't be bothered with me today. And step back into down dog. Nice long stretch here. Lengthening through the body. Broaden the shoulders. Press down through the hands and the feet. Feel connected to the floor. Where's your breathing? What's the temperature and texture of your mat? Maybe you feel grit and sand on your mat. That's okay. That's an awareness. You might not have noticed it before, but don't get distracted by it. It's just there. We allow that left leg to come forward. Grounding that back foot. Do you feel supported? Do you have alignment? Plan your inhale. Slowly we come up. We're pressing down on that back edge of that foot. So this back edge, we don't want it to roll up. We're trying to elongate and activate the tissues down that side body. But again, what's the feeling over the function of the posture? One, soften your shoulders. Two, Close your fingers. Three, where's your breath? Four, sink a little bit. Five, find your focus, smile. Six, we elongate through the crown of the head. Seven, we pull in the navel, activating core. Breathe. Eight, we lift that pelvic floor. Nine, we push through that back foot a little bit more. Ten, we plan our next exhale and slowly come down. Come to the ball of the foot. Step back to plank. Lengthen through that body. Broaden the shoulders. Grip through the fingers. Filling in lower back. Activating navel. Activating pelvic floor. Softening the tissues behind the backs of the knees. Heels float towards floor. Then we soften. Child's pose. Hands slowly pull the side body. Release shoulders. Feel connected. Nice full breathing here. Three. Four. Five. And extend those arms out. And inhale up the table. 
we feel connected. We feel the weight in the palms. We activate the fingertips. We turn the toes. We press back. Good morning, David. Lengthening through the spine, filling in lower back, lifting pelvic floor. Nice, long, active, aware, and full of intention posture. We feel the breathing, the temperature and texture of the mat, but the room, our clothing, we are aware. We bring right leg forward, grounding back foot. Find your alignment. Right knee over, right ankle. We're coming into warrior two, so we're gonna inhale. As you inhale, that inhale helps lift and generate that posture to warrior two. The shoulders are square. It's not this, it's square. My body is facing the bookshelf. My arms are out, my head turns. Don't drop your knee. Right knee is right, so you have to activate in glute. Press down through that side body. Make sure there's space between right ear, right shoulder. Breathe. One. Lift pelvic floor. Two. Maybe you can sink some. Three. Four. Five. Where's your breath? Can you elongate your spine? Six. Close those fingers. Be strong. Feel like the arms are being pulled apart. Seven. Smile. Eight, be mindful of that front knee. Nine, pull in your navel. Ten, breathe. On your next exhale, softly come to floor. Come to the ball of left foot, step back to down dog. Find just that right adjustment in body. We're again aware of the hands and the feet on the mat, but maybe at this point you're starting to definitely be aware of the muscles in the body because of the duration of the posture. These are simple postures, but the awareness, the intention, and the duration of these postures make them advanced. Now, someone who might be a little more competitive, atypical, may not agree with you until they have to do it. Being still sometimes makes them uncomfortable. Left foot travels forward. And that's why this is such a good practice. So that they can learn to sit with themselves and be still. Slowing down sometimes is much more difficult than going fast. So from here we have this good foundation. Maybe you have the alignment of your choice as we begin to press down. With that coordinated inhale, we cartwheel up. Sink into the posture. Asana means to sit with, like to sit in the light of, to sit with that information, to ponder, to sit next to the guru, take things in. So in these postures, we need to sit in them. We need to find where the effort and the ease is. Two, where's your breathing? See if you can sink a little more. Three, Begin to lift pelvic floor. Four. Pulling navel in. Five. Readjust your neck if you need to. Square off shoulders. Six. Soft faces, fingers together. Seven. Breathe fully to slow the heart rate. 
eight. Feel the warmth in the arms, nine. And 10, coordinate your exhale. We're gonna bring those hands back down. Come to ball of right foot, we step to down dog. Immediately reconnecting through palms, broadening shoulders, turn elbows up towards sky, lengthening through spine, filling in lower back, letting those heels sink, where's your breath? No hurry, nothing to a proof. Nobody can see you practicing at home, except maybe your pets. Bring those knees down. And shift back. Hands come back by the feet. Soften. Open and close those fingers. Feeling that circulation. Maybe a little bit of wrist circles here. You change the direction of those circles. We're going to extend those arms back out. Find your breath, reconnect. Inhale to table. From table, turn those toes down, dog. Bending and stretching, lengthening through the spine. Broaden shoulders. We're going to let right leg come forward, grounding that left foot. Feel supported before you move. Press down through those feet. We're going to cartwheel up as transition, straighten front leg. We're going to work on triangle. So again, my torso is forward towards bookshelf. I'm going to begin to elongate. So as I elongate in this direction, right hip goes back. Elongate, elongate, elongate. And when you can't go anymore, don't start sticking the booty out. Keep it straight. Hand maybe comes to shin, not knee. Left hand goes up. Remember, this is how it, it feels. So it's that feeling over the function. Don't try to do a perfect posture. If you feel miserable and you have to do it not as correct for your body to achieve it, that's a pleasing the ego. It's not pleasing the mind or the meditative thought or the body. Maybe after you're here, you feel you can release and maybe you can come down a little further. Maybe you make it all the way down. It's not necessary. I typically don't go all the way to the floor. I typically just hang on to my ankle. But for today, I want to focus and feel that connection of earth under my hand. Get those legs as straight as you can. And for you to keep them straight, if you have to be taller, then maybe your hand is on the thigh today. I'm gazing up at top hand. But if that's uncomfortable for your neck, look forward or down. Hips forward, shoulders back, elongate through crown of head. Two. Nice full breath. Three. Feel grounded through the feet. Four. Press the left edge of foot down. Five, lengthen through the crown of your head. Six, hips forward, shoulders back. Seven, close fingers if they're not. Eight, press down through right hand. Nine. Lift pelvic floor, 10. Allow that arm to slowly come down. 
Bend that right knee with intention. Come to the ball of left foot as you step back to down dog. Bending and stretching here, lengthening through your spine. Filling in lower back, lift pelvic floor. One, two, three, four, five. Left leg comes forward, grounding that back foot. Good morning, Julie. We're going to cartwheel up into warrior two, straight in front leg. Remember, we're all about this awareness of coming back to basics so that we can stay present in the body, finding the effort and the ease, we begin to lengthen. As that left hand goes forward, the left hip crease goes back. There's a pushing, but we're not swinging that car door forward or back. And then we tip. Maybe the hand goes here on the shin because that's where your body is today. And that is okay. Hips forward, shoulders back, look up towards top hand. Maybe it's the ankle for you today. Maybe you take the floor. You look up towards top hand if you can or adjust your neck where you can. Hips are forward, shoulders are back. We feel grounded through the feet. One. Extend to the crown of the head, two. Press down with the outside edge of right foot, three. Lifting pelvic floor, activating Mulavanda, four. Pull that navel in, active core, but just the slightest a bit, five. Keep those fingers closed. Six. Hips forward, shoulders back. Seven. Where's your breath? Nice full breath. Eight. Soften the face and smile. It matters. Nine. Mm, sink into that posture, feeling the depth of it. Ten. Top hand coordinated with your exhale comes down. Come to the ball of that foot. Step back to down dog. Bending and stretching. Lengthening through the spine, filling in lower back. Knees come down, come to child's pose, and rest. Slowly we can pull those hands back by the feet. We're going to open and close them maybe, some wrist circles, feeling that work, nice full breath. And then from there, we're going to sit up onto the feet. We're going to bring those knees in. <sighs> Try to stretch out our feet, our knees, and our hips from our work. We're going to bring that right arm across. We're going to grab not on the elbow, but here, and just give it a little stretch. You might feel really quiet today, and that's okay. And gently release. Let's do the other side. So you're bringing that left arm across like you're going to give yourself a hug, but help it with that right hand. And gently release here. Shoulders come up, back, and down. Opening through the collarbones. We're still lifting pelvic floor, navel in. If you have discomfort in your feet, Feel it. Try to figure out why. Is it the connective tissue? Is it because of bones or previous broken feet? Is it because of the shin and that tissue? 
definitely modify so you get some comfort, but understand what the feedback is in the body. We're going to come over to right hip. Extend those legs forward. Let's see if we can get a forward fold here, balancing out the body from asymmetrical work. Let gravity pull you. Feel the changes in the body during that practice. But that body has a lot of different systems. We have your skeletal systems, your muscle system, your nervous system, your energetic body, your emotional body, your spiritual body, all of those things. We are so complicated. Deliciously so. How do you feel on those levels? Slowly we begin to come up. Feel it in the knees. So that is good to know. So that's probably because of a quad. Um, muscles are probably really need to be stretched. And that will help give some, alleviate some stretch in your knees. So if you're just randomly standing around the house waiting on the show or something, if you can practice dancer to kind of stretch that out, that would be really helpful. Make it a little easier for you in the future. We're gonna bend those knees, we're gonna slowly roll back. Oh. And if you roll back quick enough, you might get a little adjustment in that thoracic spine. We're gonna pull those knees in. And we didn't do the, the cross leg earlier, so we have something to do in our restorative practice. We're going to cross the knees, pull those ankles down and up. Feel that work. One, two, three, four, five. Gently release, change the cross, ankles down, up. One, two, three, four, five. Release, uncross. Bottoms of the feet come to the floor. Windshield wiper. So we're gonna drop those knees over to the right. Feel that elongation of tissue on the left side of the body. And then switch. We bring the knees up. We bring them over to the left. We feel this elongation of tissue through right side. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to bring those knees back up. Press down through the feet and lift. One, two, Three, four, five. Slowly we lower back down. <sighs> we notice where our body's touching the floor. We notice the alignment, the tightness, the fullness, all of it, acceptingly, observation only, no judgment how the body feels right now. And then we prepare for a Shavasana. Maybe that's one leg and then the other down flat on the floor. Maybe you have a bolster at home. One, two, we sink down. We soften that back body, we release. We release the feet and ankles, the shin and calf, knees and thigh. We soften the glutes and pelvic belly. Lower back and navel. Mid back and solar plexus. Soften down. Find your breath. 
Keep your mind on the body. Experience the feeling of relaxation. Flatten the shoulder blades and lift the heart. Soften shoulders, arms, and hands. Lift your collarbones. Open the throat. Soften the face. We notice the breath that's shallow in the beginning. We feel that inhale travel up back body. Exhale, come down front body. Inhale, up back body. Exhale, down front body. Smoothing out tissues, aligning muscles, bones, full breath here. Now feel free to stay in this position if you're home, if you need more rest. But if you're going to sit up with me, maybe you move those fingers and toes, wrists, Maybe you're again aware of where the body touches the mat. Maybe in the beginning you bend one leg and then the other and just let the lower back adjust for a moment. Then maybe you pull them in to release some more. We're going to slowly roll to the right side. And then slowly come up to a comfortable seated position. Once you make it to this seated position, you allow the head to turn to the right. We allow the head to turn to the left. And at that same time, we experience this. We Feel the sits bones. We lift the pelvic floor. We pull the navel in. The shoulders are back. The spine is straight. We automatically do that with awareness. We let the head come back. We feel that fullness of breath. We feel more awake. We feel more connected. Hands come to the heart. We remind ourselves of all the amazing things we have in our life to be thankful for. We send out love and kindness and compassion to those who need it. End the practice with an OM if you're comfortable, inhaling. forward in love and respect. Namaste. Peace be with you. Go safely. And thank you for practicing with me. Feel the difference in coming back to those basics. You feel grounded, supported, calm. I love that practice. Three standing postures. That's all we did. Three. To feel this way. This connected to the ground and to the self. I appreciate that you join me every morning at 9. I'm going to continue doing this, it looks like, till June 1st. We won't get into the church until then. So you have a couple of more weeks for those of you who are afraid that that wasn't going to happen, that you were going to lose your dailies. Um, thank you. 
for liking my videos and sharing my videos here on Facebook and on YouTube. Please continue to do that so that other people might find the joy of the practice. Um, they can find out who I am and maybe they can join us in class or we can still have this venue for people who don't live locally. That's been a wonderful community to be able to have people from Miami and Georgia and Chile and Puerto Rico and other places be here with us all together. And it's wonderful and I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you for the cards. Big hearts. Mwah.